<clears throat> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Emily, the operations manager here at All Paths Family Building, formerly Resolve New England. For 50 years, we've been helping people access the options, resources, support, and community they need when trying to build the family of their dreams. Now, I'm so sorry if you tried to join our live stream um, on Facebook for whatever reason, it just wasn't working. But we are excited to still bring you this conversation about how to take care of your mental health during a family building journey today. Now, a complicated family building journey can impact every area of your life, including your mental health. If you are um, on this path, then you know that all too well. And if you are a friend or a family member of someone who is, hopefully this will kind of help lend some insight into what um, your loved one might be experiencing. And this May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are continuing to work to shift the conversation from awareness to action by connecting people who are facing fertility and family building challenges with support and resources and community so that they can take care of their mental health. Joining us today is one of our favorite people, Elena Clayman, to talk about how to take care of your mental health during your family building journey. Elena, you wanna introduce yourself? Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And you are, you and Kate are two of my favorite people. And I love being involved with um, All Paths, formerly Resolve New England. We're lucky. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I'm a mental health counselor and, and expressive arts therapist in private practice um, in Massachusetts. And I, um, a big part of my practice is working with with women and um, and couples going through infertility and family building challenges. Um, I also went through this, which is why I choose to do this work and love helping support families trying to build their, expand their families. Um, so I'm so happy to be here and um, so glad to, you know, answer any questions that you may have about um, mental health and and family building challenges and what comes up. And, and like um, you said, Emily, it definitely kind of seeps into every part of your life um, without even knowing it. Um, well, I guess to start things off, what sort of impact can a complicated family building journey have on someone's mental health? I think everyone's kind of aware of the the physical implications, the financial implications, what um, what sort of mental health impact can there be? I mean, I think what it, what it a big part of it is that there's a lot of things that you don't have control over in this process. I think what in the work I do, I like to remind clients that of the things they do have control over because there actually are a lot of things we do have control over. Um, so just, finding ways to take care of yourself, things that you enjoy doing, you know, to take care of your mental health, your physical health and your mental health, maybe going for walks or, you know, incorporating. I mean, I love taking photos. So when I go for walks, I take photos going, um, maybe writing in a journal, using an art journal, um, bring creativity into it, you know, whatever that looks like for you, that can be different for different people. Walking in nature can be creative, you know, um, bringing, you know, if, if you're interested, you know, comfortable using different art materials, just kind of exploring different things to kind of find other ways to get maybe stress out or connect with different parts of yourself. Um, and I think the other part is, is that it really puts your life on hold. I think a lot of um, the women I work with talk about just not being able to plan, like, will I be pregnant? Should I buy this? Should I not buy these? close for this upcoming wedding, you know, because I might be pregnant or I can't plan a vacation because I'm in the middle of a cycle or I'm waiting for a cycle or I'm waiting to find out if I'm pregnant or I'm waiting to find out if I'm not pregnant. Um, there's so many ways in which your life is on hold. And so there's, there's so many different layers and stages to it. I feel like, you know, when you, before a cycle, you might be anxious and not sure what it's going to be like when you're in a cycle, you feel a little bit more in control because you're doing a lot of things. And that's, I remember when I was going through it, I felt like I, you know, I actually enjoyed being actively in the cycle because there were things I could do. So mm -hmm. it felt like I was moving forward. And then, you know, all there's so much waiting. And so I think the waiting, I think 
is one of the hardest parts of going through this. Um, I think those are some really great kind of suggestions on ways people can take care of themselves on like a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how do you have any sort of advice? Like, how do you know if you are someone who's going through this? Like looking back when I was going through my own journey, I absolutely could have benefited to talking to someone um, about what was going on, but I don't think I realized that in the moment. So how, what are some signs or how can you figure out if maybe additional support um, is yeah is needed for you at that time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if you're noticing that it's impacting your day-to-day -day life, maybe you're distracted, maybe you're noticing your moods are up and down, which could be so many different things, right? The hormones, the waiting, the, you know, everything. Yep. You know, also just the day-to-day -day managing relationships and watching people around you, friends and family, maybe seemingly easily getting pregnant or having, um, new babies or becoming parents for the first or second time or third time even watching that you know as time goes on so I think just noticing if, if it's really impacting your day-to-day -day life um I think it's I mean even if it I mean even if you don't know it is it is you know so I think it's always helpful to have someone to talk to you know whether that be a friend um who's gone through it or maybe a support group um, or, um, or an individual um, counselor or therapist who does work with women um, and couples going through family building challenges, just because I think it, it helps to talk to someone who gets it because I've had women come like they love their therapist, but they feel like they don't really understand mm -hmm. IVF or the infertility you know, process and journey. And then they feel like they spend their whole time explaining it. So I think it does help to have someone who has experience and some training um, in, in this particular area. So they don't have to explain each procedure. And, you know, so that can be really helpful. And so I think it's, you can't go wrong by reaching out for extra support. I do feel like groups, in particular can be really, really helpful. And I remember the first time I ran a support group and I, I all the, you know, there were like 10 women in the room. None of them had ever met each other, but within like 10 minutes, there was this feeling of warmth and kind of camaraderie. We're all in this together. They could express frustration and they could cry. They could laugh, you know, with women who really understood where they were coming from and it just felt like they could say things that maybe they couldn't say to their friends or family you know and and friends and family try to be really supportive you know even the most supportive friend and family member sometimes says something that can be hard or hurtful not meaning to be just because they're trying to support yeah. their loved one and it's challenging to to find the right there, there often is no right thing to say sometimes just saying I'm here I'm thinking of you and you know sending positive thoughts or energy or you know let me know what you need I mean sometimes letting people know what you need is the best way to go even though it's hard we want people we want our friends and family to know what we need or our partners mm -hmm. right but they don't always know so I'll, I'll usually talk when I'm talk, meeting with someone, couple or individual, I'll just say, let people know what you need, because that might change from minute to minute or day to day. And then you'll get your needs met. And I, I often encourage people to send an email sometimes with, you know, maybe they send a group email because they can't update each person on what's going on. And it sounds impersonal, but it, it actually can be really helpful to say, this is what's been going on. I'll let you know if there's any updates. So you don't have like 20 people checking in with you, which can be overwhelming. Um, and just let them know, this is what would be helpful right now. If just sending me texts, let me know you're thinking of me or, you know, so that you don't have to respond. Sometimes just knowing mm -hmm. you don't have to respond. Yeah. Really That's helpful. That's a good point. And that's a, that's a topic that comes up a lot in our groups that we can um, talk about. And another um, strategy that I know has worked for a lot of other families is to kind of designate someone as your spokesperson. Yes. Uh, so 
again, so you're not dealing with, you know, people that are, yeah. you know, interested in, in, you know, trying to support you and, and obviously have the best of intentions, but they're, you're not just inundated with texts or emails or calls around, you know, different procedures, or if, you know, people know that a test result is going to be release soon it's you know you update that one person and then they handle all of that um that kind of mental load yeah definitely i like that a lot just the fertility spokesperson <laughs> yeah i think giving people roles and jobs i think it's really helpful for people in your in your life to know what you need because every person is different, right? And, and everyone needs something different. How, so this, I mean, there might not be an answer to this question, but I know there are definitely times that you, you don't know what you need. How do you navigate those? And when you're just like, yeah. I know that I'm not okay, but I don't know where to go next. Like what? Yeah. How, how um, yeah, I mean, I think kind of, you mean if I'm meeting with someone who says that or, or what, how to encourage I see it. Like, what would you say to somebody if they come, they say like, I know I'm not okay, but I don't even know where to start to figure out like, you know, is it, I need to spend more time talking to people who understand, is it that I need to set boundaries with friends or family? Like, I, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. How I mean, I think sometimes just having a conversation with someone, you kind of get a sense of what they need, you know, just like, you know, I might say, oh, it sounds like it's been overwhelming going to all these family events or you've had a lot of friends who are having babies and baby showers. I guess, like you said, you know, setting boundaries and maybe encouraging them to check in with themselves a lot. I, I talk about that a lot because we, we know what we need, right? Inside, it's somewhere there. So I think the more you check in with yourself, the easier it becomes to know what you need in that moment. And maybe you think you're okay to go to the baby shower, but then you wake up that morning and you're like, I just can't do it. And it's okay to let your friend know, sorry, I can't make it today, but I'd love to maybe go out for lunch sometime or go for a walk. You know, like there's different ways you can support friends and encouraging that. Um, but I think just talking to them about what are things that they do to help relieve stress, whether it be walking, whether it be creating art, whether it be spending time alone in nature, talking to a friend, or who are the people that you feel most comfortable with during this time? Because usually there's some people that you feel more comfortable with than others that you don't, and it's okay to spend more time with the people you feel more comfortable with in that time in your life and kind of reminding everybody that this is temporary, even though it doesn't feel temporary when you're in it, it feels like it's always going to feel this way. It really isn't. It's just a moment. And there's going to be hard moments and there's going to be good moments. And I think another thing that many clients I work with struggle with is feeling okay. They, they feel okay in a moment. They don't feel like they should. It's like, no, I'm, I, I shouldn't feel okay. I'm going through this. I need to, it's almost like they feel like if they feel okay, it's like, it's not going to work out. <laughs> but I mean, if you're feeling okay in a moment, just let yourself feel okay, because there's going to be moments you don't feel okay. And the moments you do are going to help you through the hard moments. That's a, so I'm that's not a, sure if that answered your question. <laughs> no, definitely. And that's a, that's a really good point that sometimes you do hit a point where you're like, oh, I'm feeling at peace or okay with everything that's going on. And you're like, wait, that, that, is that a bad sign? Does that mean like the other shoe's about to drop? What's what's going to go wrong next? So it's nice to get that reminder that like, no, it's okay if everything is kind of all right for the minute. Um, yeah. Yeah. And life is always, things are always changing, you know, like sometimes someone will say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to feel in September. And it's like January. And I'm like, well, you know, that's a really long time from now and a lot can happen between now and then. So just a reminder to really bring, come back to the moment and what's happening right now and what is true right now can sometimes be really calming and like just talking about now until your next appointment or until your next check or whatever it is, you know, just kind of going, having like boundaries around that so that 
it's not like you're jumping too far ahead and kind of so overwhelmed you can't think straight. Yeah, definitely. Um, now I know you've mentioned arts therapy and like being creative as a it can be a great way to kind of take care of your mental health, give some self care, reflect, and kind of check in with yourself. Um, do you have any examples of <clears throat> projects? Isn't the word, but like any examples of yeah. Things? can try at home if they're interested yeah I mean I like to encourage you know because you know there a lot of people are scared like oh I'm not an artist I can't mm -hmm. do this and I just really want to encourage anyone to just pick up some art materials and just kind of not worry about what you're doing maybe even doing it as part of your journal right like maybe you don't feel like writing but maybe just pick up some different colors or notice colors you're drawn to just doodle create designs also collage can be really helpful using magazines or even they have different online programs where you can do collage jamboard is one of my favorites unfortunately it's being discontinued through mm -hmm. google i'm not sure why but there's other ones like apps where you can go you know you can search images and kind of create almost like i don't know what you want i mean you know like a pinterest board or whatever they call them or um a vision board of what you want to kind of surround yourself with, whether that be pictures of nature, people in your life, maybe certain quotes or words that maybe are comforting to you and bring you, you know, bring you back to the moment. I also encourage, I'll often help um, clients like write out affirmations. I'll, you know, we'll talk about it. I'll write it out and send it to them and encourage them to put it in their phone, in their notes section, and maybe put images, maybe taking photos that bring them back to the moment or bring them peace or um, encourage um, just mindfulness. So just, you know, things that they can kind of look at when they're really struggling, because those are the moments where it's really hard to access that. Mm -hmm. um, so collage is kind of a nice, safe way. You can use magazines or anything really to create, you know, what, what are you drawn to kind of ripping images out and and mm -hmm. using words and images to kind of um, have a visual of maybe what's going on inside or maybe what you need to see mm -hmm. and maybe hang it up in your room and you can keep adding to it if you want um, or make another one and see how it's changed over time. Yeah, I love that. And it's an easy way to, to like keep you out of your own head and be like, it's not dependent on your artistic ability in any sense. It's just a way of creating. Yeah, I mean, and, and also going for walks. I, I started, I talk about this a lot. I started during the pandemic going for walks every day, just around my neighborhood, mostly, sometimes in other neighborhoods, but mostly just around here in between clients or, you know, either with a neighbor or a friend or often by myself. And I noticed there's always like a theme every day, even though I don't plan it. Like I'm just drawn to certain, like I walk often on the same streets, but I'll notice something different. And I feel like it's a, so it, it kind of matches with what I'm going through at the moment without even realizing it. You know, you're kind of drawn to things depending on your mood, depending on what's going on in your life in that particular moment without even being aware of it. So I find that really fun and to notice, like, why am I drawn to that today? And, you know, I didn't notice that little plant growing out of that crack in the sidewalk yesterday, or maybe it wasn't very much smaller and I didn't notice it um so and I feel like it, it's a nice way to kind of be with yourself kind of be in the moment kind of just kind of you're moving so you always feel better like even if there's times where I'm like oh I'm so tired I don't want to go for a walk but every time I go for a walk I've never come back feeling worse I always feel a little bit better and everyone most people have a phone with them and I mostly take pictures with my phone and um, and it's just a nice way to connect with myself or even when, if I'm with a friend or a neighbor and they're like, they like seeing like, what did you know? To, what, what were you just taking a picture of? Like, you know, I'm like, just so you know, I stop along the way <laughs> and take photos, but it's been really, it's been really fun. And it was kind of unexpected that that happened. And, you know, there weren't too many silver linings of the pandemic, but I feel like that was one of them. It kind of helped me to slow down and to notice things that maybe I didn't notice, like that term stop and smell the flowers. Like it's, it's real, it's, it really mm -hmm. does make a difference. And so creativity can look different for different people. I mean, 
being in nature and noticing, you know, different flowers or mushrooms in the forest or even in the park around the corner from your house or on a tree right down the street from you. I mean, I live in Somerville. It's, in, you know, in the middle of the city. I don't live like, you know, out in nature, but there's actually a lot of nature here that I never even thought of or noticed. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel like we all, we, we're all creative and it, that might look different for different people. It could be writing. Some people like to write, whether it be in a journal or just jotting things down or writing poetry or anything, or even writing from a photo like that you took or an old photo from when you were young of your family or of some anything really so I love using photos as part of the work and I often will encourage clients to bring photos to the session or even send them to me in, in between sessions another thing I use a lot is like little memes which I always feel like very current when I say that word <laughs> <laughs> you know a meme it feels like a cool thing or maybe it's not cool anymore I don't know but um, I love finding memes with quotes and images, and I often send them to clients in between sessions if it reminds me of something we talked about or if it's, you know, something that I feel like could help them. So I feel like that's another way of being creative, you know, is using finding quotes or finding images um, that you're drawn to that kind of bring you a little joy in the moment or just make you pause. So the pausing and taking a moment. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Those are some really great kind of ideas to get people started if they're interested. Um, I know we've only got a couple minutes left, but um, I just want to kick it back and ask a question some about um, something you mentioned a little while ago when you were talking about working with um, a mental health professional, um, how it can be helpful to find someone who understands this world. So you're not, you know, constantly explaining things or, um, educating them on the process, whether you're going through fertility treatments or it's adoption or, you know, no matter how, how yeah. you're building a family, um, it can be helpful to talk to someone who already kind of has a basic understanding, um, so that they can support you and you're not educating them before that can even happen. Um, if someone was interested in connecting with a mental health professional who kind of understands this world, where do you have like a couple places that they would start? Yeah, I mean, All Paths has um, on their website, you can find links and, and um, to different therapists, different professionals that work in this field and, and are trained. Um, and uh, Psychology Today, you can search, you can do a search for infertility um, you know, or family building, um, adoption for mental health professionals that specialize in this area. And All Paths also has many, many um, peer-led support groups for, of, of, you know, people that have gone through, you know, different challenges in family building, and they, they offer many virtual support groups. And I also offer um, some support groups in my practice, an infertility group once a week. I also um, have a pregnancy after infertility group and a mom's after infertility group. And that was something that I was so excited. And that's another thing that happened over the pandemic. A lot of these groups went virtual and I actually think it's really, really helpful. And it encourages participation because it's so much easier because you know when you're going through this process you are going to a lot of appointments or a lot of meetings and it's just so much easier to just be able to log in wherever you are and it also opens it up to you know I do meet with a lot of you know people that live in western mass who I would never meet with otherwise so um and in the groups you don't have to be in Massachusetts for individual work you know, I would have to meet with clients who are in the state of Massachusetts, but for the groups, um, people can call in from anywhere um, through any, for any of these groups through all paths or, or the groups that I run or that other therapists run as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, the, yeah, the accessibility of virtual support has yeah. kind of been a game changer for this space. Um, and thank you for mentioning our directory. I will say, um, if anybody wants to connect with Alina, her info is there as well. Um, and you can search, if you're not a Massachusetts resident, you can search um, 
mental health professionals by licensure. If you are looking for someone in a different state, or you can always email us, we're happy to connect you with um, folks, depending on um, if you have you know, specific insurance requirements that um, you're looking for, um, state, if you're looking for virtual versus in-person, all of that, we're happy to help. Um, so I think it's just about time for us to wrap up. Are there any last thoughts that you wanted to share? No, just that I think, I think just know that you're not alone in this. There's so many, and that's what I always like to remind um, the women and the couples that I work with is that there are so many people going through this and you don't have to go through this alone. Um, so just knowing that you're, there are people out there that can support you. And so definitely reach out and um, to all paths and to it you know, other supports that are in the area. So thank you so much. This was really fun. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us today and and every day. Um, <laughs> if um, you would like to learn more about supporting your mental health during a family building journey, um, or if you're looking for specific resources, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, as I mentioned, you can find Alina's info in our directory um, and you can always reach out to us at All Paths. Um, on our socials or through our email at admin at allpathsfb.org. So thank you all again. Um, apologies again for the Facebook Live mishaps yesterday. And if you ever need any supports, please don't hesitate to reach out.